Hi, right, y'all. So welcome back. Welcome back. And, and upon many people asking, we have brought Jax back into the studio today to talk about heavy shit, man. We talk about heavy shit. Yeah. But before we get to the heavy shit, let's talk about Jax. Like, reintroduce yourself real quick. What's up, just everybody? For, just for the people that don't know who you were, you know what I mean, in the last video. I'm Jax. I'm 30 now. 30? Ooh. <laughs> right? It was right before your birthday Ooh, last time, yeah. wasn't it? Uh -huh. Oh, that's crazy to say. Um, Yeah. I'm a mom of a 12-year-old little girl named Marley. I'm about to change my life and move across the country. So that's new. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that, but I am. I'm going to go be with my brother and sister. Where is that and when is that? Denver, Colorado. Wow. Okay. Yep. So Denver, Colorado. Uh, my daughter leaves Saturday to mm -hmm. go out there because she starts school. And then I leave on the 1st. Um, about to retire from Applebee's. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say like maybe, I want to say like September or something. Maybe September 13th would have made my 11 years there. Mm. So September, actually August 27th would be my last day. So that's bittersweet. What are you going to do when you get out of Colorado for work? I'm going to go to school. I'm okay. going to be a nurse. I'm going to go to nursing school. I'm going to bartend nightlife downtown Denver. It's really popping, really busy, a lot of money to make. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm going to still sling drinks. Okay. <laughs> drink slang. Still sling drinks, talk my shit mm -hmm. <laughs> like I always do. I already know. I mean, yeah. I, I've sat in Applebee's a couple times. No, I run my mouth. Hey, don't you? <laughs> I tell people all the time, I don't even work here. Mm. I just talk shit. Mm. <laughs> I don't mm. do nothing else. If you don't want that, don't come to bar side. No, facts. Don't. Go over there. Yeah, they know. And you might even hear me a little bit on the, yeah. on the family side, too. And you will. And you will. <laughs> <laughs> but they still go ask for my drinks. Right. But yeah, yeah that's that's facts, everything man. new with okay, me. Okay. Okay. So uh, that sounds awesome. Like so, relationship wise, where are you at with that? I'm still single. Okay. Still. So it's just you and Marley rolling out. Yeah. So if you want to holla at me. <laughs> ah. Okay. Denver, Colorado, coming at you. Facts. That's what's up. Yeah. But big yeah. smoke out in Denver too, right? Ah, the greatest. Yeah. Actually, smoke, I'm right? not gonna lie. When I was there last time, it was um. I went to a new dispensary and it was just a I'm, nudist dispensary. Uh, yeah, I, oh. I haven't been to this one yet. That, that's what I should say. I try a lot of them, a lot of different ones when I go, mm -hmm. but I had tried a new one. And my sister was like, "Oh, mom used to go to this one," and Brian, our stepdad, used to go. And I'm like, "Okay," so I go in, and I, uh, I bought some shit, and it was just, I think it was like watermelon something, but when I say it, it tastes like somebody squirted some watermelon perfume on it when i was smoking i was like that's too mm, that's not yeah, good for me right. i i like the local stuff mm, right right <laughs> the, the good smelling yeah, stuff yeah so yeah, that, that's terpenes or something they say they spray on there but i don't like it either it smells <sighs> like cat piss to me sometimes yeah it's very strong very just it even when you smoke in it you can it's like you taste it smell it i'm good i don't want it mm -hmm. i'm good so i felt like that was a. Uh, I left it there really i left it i was like just you know Gave it to my brother-in-law. Y'all can have that. I don't... Mm -mm. I guess I'm sitting on my shelf now that was gifted to me, and it just stays gifted. <laughs> me too. A big <laughs> a big old jar. <laughs> just... But, you know, we can't complain about that, man. I feel like like at one time we didn't have weed like that. Right yeah, now it's yeah, like plenty full. It's everywhere. Yeah. Uh, it's like alcohol. You have several different brands to pick from and different flavors and different ways to do it. And you got the one that you just love, and you keep going back right. to <laughs> Uh, I switch it up. I'll do bowls for a while, then I'll do cones, then I'll roll. Right now, I'm in a rolling stage. So right now, I'm rolling joints. I I used to, when I first started smoking those gravity bongs, just rip it, get mm -hmm. super smacked mm -hmm. real fast. Mm -hmm. And then it was, oh, shit, I got to hide that I'm doing this. So it was like, let's go hit the bowl real quick or the one hitter. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm grown, I just roll it up. Mm -hmm. I just roll it up. <laughs> There's still one laying on the table. No, there yeah. it is. <laughs> We're going to finish that in a little in bit. Our... We're going to finish that Thanks. in a little bit. So what do we want to talk about, man? I feel like there was a few things we wanted to address. I don't want to get way heavy with this yeah. conversation. Yeah. Neither one of us do. We talked about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? We don't want to get all crying and heavy and all no. that shit. But I want to respond to a couple of the people that... Yeah. We got the, we got got, the messages. Yeah, Let's pull it up. I, I got the comments right here. A couple of people that messaged me. I could pull that up, too, in a second. Okay, yeah, yeah we're probably going to drop no names something. or anything, yeah, yeah, no, but no, we're no. just going to talk about what they said. Uh, Facts. I guess we could really start off with um, 
right after I did the podcast, obviously, like everybody, like, you know, it just poured in. Mm-hmm. It really just poured in. And I was, I, I knew because like, I know everybody, like, I don't know if you have seen mm-hmm. how many people I know, but I know a lot of people. So it just started pouring in. Everybody started Jack's like, oh my God, I never would have knew. Like, how do you, how do you smile all the time? And everything's just like, you never would have knew you never like, and then there's was some people that was like, oh my God, I remember that. Like, I remember when that happened. Oh my God, Jackie. And I'm like, damn, like a lot of, like, I forgot that other people have a perspective too. It was like, yeah, I went through it and I and I experienced it. But then it's like from the outsiders looking in and what they say to me, I'm like, oh, shit. Like, mm-hmm. I'm taken back by it. Like, mm-hmm. even the the mom and the daughter, they reached out to me right after. And that was like, mm-hmm. I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I. I didn't expect it at all. I didn't. So, like, what was that? What was that text or conversation? Uh, so, <clears throat> and for anybody that doesn't know, if you haven't watched the first one, man, go watch the first one to understand Facts. basically what we talked about in that one because it's a lot of uh, early stuff for Jacks, abusive stuff, yeah. and 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 most every way you can think about abuse. So check that out. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. you're kind of stuck at what we're talking about, man, and then come back to this one. But carry on. Yeah. So. Um, obviously it got a lot of views. A lot of people watched it. I shared it. You shared it. A couple other people shared it. Um, and the daughter reached out to me first. And she, like I said in the video before, she was my friend. She mm-hmm. was my, one of my best friends growing up, like a little sister to me. So she reached out and she was like, I think the first thing, if I'm not mistaken, that she said was Jackie, I, I'm just so sorry. Like, she was just apologizing, telling me, like, she loved me and she's sorry. And, like, she knows that I was talking about her dad and that she remembers it. And she believed me from the very beginning. And she knew that I was telling the truth and Mm. just that she loved me. And she just she just very apologetic. And I, you know, like, it wasn't your fault. She, like, remembered, like, what I had talked about and, like, me, like, pulling her hair and all of that stuff in the middle of the night. And then, um... Basically, that was it. We stayed in touch um, a lot, con- like frequently after that. She- we would message each other. Um, and then the mom, the mom who was like a second mom to me, she she messaged my sister because I was hesitant to open up her message because it was like the little girl in me was like kind of scared still, like kind of scared of like, like what what is she gonna say? Mm. Like you know what I'm saying? So I didn't really? open her message for a while. Didn't want to relive it, right? Yeah, yeah. I was like, mm, that was deep for me. I was like, mm. Mm. like when I seen that, I was like, ooh. So um I didn't open her message. She she reached out to my sister and she was like, Hey, like, can you please give Jackie my number? Like, I just wanna talk to her, like, I just need to talk to her. Like, please. And I saw something and I just need to talk to her. So uh, immediately after my sister, me and my sister on the phone, I go to the message. I read it to my sister while I'm on the phone. I'm like, I'm going to call her. She sent me her number. I'm going to call her. So I messaged her back. And I was like, at the time, I was I was, just, I was at the bar. So I had stepped outside. And I, uh, I called her. I just fucking did it. I was like, hi. And she was like, Jackie, like... I love you so much. Like, I hope you know that, like, why didn't you tell me? Like, stuff like that. Like, and I'm like, I don't, how could I? Like, how how can you, like, I don't, I didn't even know what to say or what to do myself. So it was just like me explaining my, like, I, I wanted her to know that it wasn't her fault. Because I felt like she was taking, like, a lot of the blame for it. Mm. And that, like, she was like, I never would have let him get away with that. Like, I just wish you would have told me. And I'm like, it's not your fault. Like, it's not your fault. I don't I don't want you, like, and she was like, <laughs> called me. <laughs> Call- Ooh, you gotta, you gotta bleep that out. Mm-hmm. Bleep that out. Mm-hmm. She was like, she called me and she was like, Mom, did you see Jackie's podcast? And she was like, no, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. And she said, well, you need to go watch it because she she's talking about dad. And I was like, 
she said that to you? She was like, yeah, she said that to me. So I immediately went and watched it. And she was like, I just, you were, you were like my baby. Like you were like one of my own. I would have did anything. And she did. When I say this woman took care of me, mm. I mean, she was like a mom I never had. Like what, like the, sh the stuff she would do with me was just mm. like yard selling, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. taking me everywhere, buying me anything. Get, like she was the first person I got my nails done with, like me and her daughter. Like we, she got us a place at outside, a pool. I mean, cooking so breakfast every morning. That makes me question where does the breakdown come? Because like she's saying now that she wish you would have told her, but you felt like you couldn't. But you were also like really very close with her. Very close. Very like, close why, with her. Why, 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 what's that? Where's that breakdown start for someone okay. that could be there? Like, okay. where, where's that breakdown you think now? Yeah, yeah. So um from my from my perspective as a little girl, because obviously uh everybody has a different point of view. Like like it's kinda like the butterfly effect. You can see it from everybody's different point of view, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So as a little girl, from my perspective, it was I saw how abusive he was to her. And I saw how abusive he was to his daughter. And I saw a lot of stuff that, like, I should have never saw go down with this man. So I was scared. Mm. Not only for myself, but for the people that mm. were around me. Because I knew it was going to happen. Mm. Like, I watched him do some crazy shit to both of them. So it was, it was a scary scenario for me. Regardless of the way you like, I I watched him pull a gun out and and mm, okay I'll, yeah. okay so that makes a lot of sense too, um, because I feel like a lot of us have this uh, it's that creepy guy the big glasses oh my god no um you know that's on his computer looking at pictures no. that's kind of like yeah. I just you know what I'm saying it's like sometimes you yeah. ask someone what do they see as an alcoholic and they'll tell you that that man on the street with a scraggly beard and a wine bottle in a bag Sweating. it's just where our brain goes right mm -hmm. so our brain kind of goes there too um for this type of stuff i think you know because it does for me yeah until you know things like this opens your eyes a little bit yeah so even seeing all that stuff around i guess has made it even worse like no way i can't he's already hurting why would i make it worse mm -hmm. type instead of he seems innocent let's tell on him it, the violence makes you stop mm -hmm. the fear makes you stop from talking yeah, and like I had already been through a situation prior to where I did tell. And it was like, am I going to make it alive out of this house? Mm, that was when, All of us. That was when your sister, which... No, that yeah. time we didn't even talk about. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was the time we didn't even talk about. So, so it was and, once or twice you had learned that telling didn't always oh, hell come out no. to be the solution, huh? Yeah, I didn't think no person, the last time when I did tell, I didn't think nobody was going to make it alive out of that house, including the kids. Like it, it got mm. bad. So, and that's a whole nother situation, a whole nother story. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we don't want to open yeah, that. Bag yeah. Yeah. So, right cause that's, that's okay. For so, another time. so at the end of this, like these people reached out to you and they were part of like, and now. Mm, yeah. So, you know, she, she calls me and we, I tell her, we talk and she wanted to know, she wanted to know details and like a little bit of stuff that happened. And I told her, like, I kept it real, like, yeah, that shit happened. And she was just like taken aback by it. But also, in the same sense, in the motherly figure that she was to me, uh, I want to see you and Marley before your move. Mm. Please come over. I'll mm -hmm. make your favorite cake with the mm -hmm. strawberries. Like, I can't, like, and she's older now, so she can't really do too much. Mm. She can't really do too much like she used to, but, I mean, she'll put her foot in some pie and some sausage gravy and biscuits, and right. I would dog it. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, huh. and even, even, like, now that I'm a grown woman, like, Yes, I would still go sit with her and talk to her mm -hmm. and be around her because I still do have love for her. Mm -hmm. She did a lot for me as a little girl. Mm -hmm. Same with same with her daughter. I would sure. still go give her a hug, tell her it's not her fault either because mm -hmm. I think they, they take a lot of blame for it because that's their husband and their dad. Right. They can't help but to take blame for it. Right. Uh, I've been having conversations with someone from my past. He's a child of someone that I grew up around and with. Um. And we just had a conversation recently without getting into it too much where I seen it one way, his mother seen it a different way. And, and it's kind of like I was almost lying because I know she's telling the truth, but it's 30 years ago. I can't remember exactly how it went. So when, when I was corrected, I took it in like, okay, man, I was wrong, but I yeah. was really wrong back then. Like yeah. what I did in that situation was the wrong way to take care of it. And I would do it differently now. And I really felt like shit. 
when I got called out on it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So these people are in that same situation where it's like, where could I have done something differently? What, what, what was happening that I didn't see? Yeah. You know, yeah. cause that's how I felt. Yeah. And it's heavy again. Yeah. Right. It's heavy. Like we was talking before yeah. we even come in yeah, here. It's heavy. Uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot of weight to carry for sure. But sometimes you just gotta let it go. You just mm -hmm. gotta set it down. Right. You just gotta set it down because it's not even like for us to carry anymore. Like mm -hmm. you just gotta like, that's where wisdom comes from, right? That's when you go through things and you you have like you develop like a sense of okay, so I've been through this, so this is what to expect. This is like that's why you give people advice. That's mm -hmm. why you talk about stuff mm -hmm. like this because, because that's literally how how you get wiser. An experience. Yes, experience with like, wisdom. And it's just like yeah. it it might suck, but you just got to let it go. <clears throat> and and everybody that's like Jackie, how do you smile? Da da da. da. You got to set it down. Right. You got to well, sit it the hell on down. What's in front of you and not yeah. what's behind. Yeah, you can't change it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that you can change about Stop it. Stop reliving it. Yeah, and you got to forgive. You do. You have mm. to forgive. You have to forgive everybody that has ever hurt you in your life. Because if you don't, you're never gonna truly love yourself. Imagine not. Imagine not being able to say, you know what? I forgive you for how you hurt me. Like that's a weight that you just put down and don't ever have to pick back up. Mm -hmm. Like, you did what you did. It is what it is. And we're going to move on from it. You're going to live your life. I'm going to live my life. And you're not going to live rent-free in my head. And that's what it is. Like you and just, if not, you're carrying around resentment. And oh, my God. Resentment is made of anger. And and stress kills you the fastest. Mm -hmm. So so it, you're going to eventually, like, you thinking about that, it's, it's in the back of your mind. It's in your conscience. So when you go to sleep at night, you could have dreams about it, wake up, fucked up all over again. Mm -hmm. So sit it down. Sit it down and let it go. Facts. Move on, man. I feel like that's hard to do sometimes, right? Hell yeah. But with talking about it in therapy, it'll fucking, I'm telling you, it'll do right? it. Pray. Pray so about it. first comment on here was, this girl is full of love and kind and strong. She is amazing. And I think this is your sister. Proud of my sister for this. Oh, thank you. When seeing the podcast or the post for the podcast on Facebook, I immediately sent, to her, sent it to her and told her to come and tell her story. I'm not going to read all this. Things aren't talked about this enough, though, is basically what she's saying. The things that humans go through and people don't want to talk about it. And it's even to the point that, like, some of the times I put these things up on social media and people will hit the comments with, you are too comfortable talking about this on social media. And I'm like, that's the whole point, mm -hmm. right? Isn't that the whole point? But that's because they were taught their whole lives to keep Hush. it in, in, in the house and don't talk about it. But that's where all our problems come from. Mm. Not the talking embarrassment, about it. Family embarrassment yeah, too. Huh? You, your pride. You can't set it down. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Can't set it down. You got to be able to be vulnerable, man. You really do. Like you have to be able to be vulnerable so you be so you can become humble. Mm -hmm. Like, and people with that pride shit. That's like, uh, it's like your whole energy, your whole your whole everything. Like you can tell. Mm -hmm. You can really tell when people can't just sit the pride down and be like, accountability. <laughs> forgiveness mm -hmm. i'm sorry like anything like that or it happened tell the truth right you know right move on and this one's like uh this one really got me can't imagine how difficult it was for you to do and then here's another one i literally cried for over an hour like these are just so many lives can be impacted by one person. What an amazing interview. I'm proud of you for being able to share your story like this. I love you forever, cuz. I'm so proud of who you are. Um, Even my family. Some of my family didn't know it. Really? Yeah. And, like, my cousins, like, they reached out to me, like, when... My one cousin, you know, he helps me with, like, the manly shit at my house or on or on the car or anything like that. And he had to work with him forever. He works beside him and didn't really know any of this mm -hmm. at all. So when he comes to my house, like, he don't even – he won't even say his name around me. He respects me that much. He won't mm -hmm. even say his name. He's, like, the, the guy that I'm not even going to name. 
Like, he don't even deserve to mm-hmm. have his name spoken around you. Like, yeah. So. Hmm. So do you feel like, like, tell me the benefits of the podcast for you and tell me the cons. Like, like were there any negatives? Mm. <clears throat> I mean, I know you had to relive it. I know it's like reliving something that's got to be fucking hard, right? No, it's not. People, people have asked me like, "Dang, how did you do that? Like, don't you like? Didn't you feel some type of way?" Like, me and my cousin were talking about it because she was like, "I don't want to make you relive it." Like when we're messaging, because she didn't have a clue neither, my other cousin, and she knew some stuff because she was one of the people in my life that cared. And she, she called CPS a few times Mm. when shit was going down. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so we're messaging about it or whatever. And she was like, I just, I don't, you don't have to, like, I'm sorry. You don't have to answer any of these questions if you don't relive it. And I'm like, to me, it's not reliving it because I let it go. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm comfortable to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't hold it in anymore i don't like keep the weight on my shoulders like i don't nothing like even if i seen that man like i still i still like you're not gonna see no emotion from me Mm -hmm. like i'm not gonna it's it i don't want to see you like let's not get it twisted i don't want to fucking see you but even if i did you would never affect me ever again in your fucking life Mm -hmm. never Like, it does not affect me at all. Like, even when I leave here, it's not, I'm going to think about what we talked about, cool, whatever, but I'm not going to relive any of the shit that he did to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go back and be like. it's also like you can take these six months or 10 years, whatever that trauma-filled part of your life was, and let it stay right there, or you can live it forever, right? Yeah, yeah. you got to leave it somewhere. It's kind of what I hear, like. If you still gave him the power over your day to day now, that would be insane. Right. I would be crazy. I would really be fucking crazy. Right. I mean, I am crazy, but I would really be crazy. So, no, hell no. Yeah. I don't, it's not, it's not really. Some people, it probably would be. Uh-huh. Some people talking about what they went through. It, back in the day, yes. The woman I am today, hell no. Hell right, no. Right. Hell no. I've been through way too much and I've I've experienced way more hurt than that. So you to me, you can't hurt me anymore. There's nothing that and you can do. It's not necessarily about telling the world at the all. Have, but it's about talking about it to someone you trust enough to get it off your shoulders that you feel like yeah. that, that talking about it helped to lift some of that weight. Yeah, and and a lot of therapy. A lot so of therapy the, the, to understand. Basically, that's kind of where I'm at, yeah. too. Like, this is almost a therapy. It is. It is definitely because therapy. Because we're talking, you're just basically talking to, like, a therapist might be able to pull it Facts. out of you differently or something. Facts. But, or even, like, the doctor part of it where they're like, this is why. Remember how I was telling mm-hmm. you, like, mm-hmm. my body and stuff like mm-hmm. that, the reactions and me not understanding. And then them telling, well, that's your mm-hmm. brain, the mm-hmm. chemistry. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the doctor part of it, too, that made me realize. Honestly, that part of it made me realize, okay, this really, like... It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Right. Because for a long time, I thought it was me. Right. I can see that. So that that really was fucking healing for me mm. to hear that, like, it, it, that happened because that's your body's natural reaction. Like, because that's what that was a big thing for me. That's what I held on to for a long time. Mm. Like, am I a weirdo? Like, am I a weirdo? Because... Mm. I got wet. Right, because my my body naturally responded the way it's supposed yes. to to a creepy situation made you feel like you were creepy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And in reality, statistically, um a lot of people fall in love with their abusers. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of people, um, even their stalkers, even like people who they they fall in love with them and and it's like they crave them. Like I don't know if um anybody watches Netflix, but if you do, check out the check out the move the the series Reindeer. I'm telling you that shit is uh rain with the crazy woman. Man, I watched that. Did you see the ending? I did. Okay. Super weird. Right. He <laughs> like, fell in love with her. Right. I watched the whole like, thing. Like you didn't fucking want her for you wanted her to leave you the fuck alone. I, I watched and it then, all the way to the end and at the end of it I was like, Wow, this fuck? is really crazy. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. Gosh, she sent all the texts. It was so funny because she sent a text and it would be like sent from Little my iPhone. Little reindeer. Sent from my iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> Little reindeer. But it's so crazy. Yeah, that was a crazy thing. If you haven't seen it on Netflix, was it just reindeer? Is that all it was called? I think it is just called reindeer. It had something to do with reindeer. And then that chick's normally funny, right? Is Hilarious. that the same chick? She normally plays a really funny yes. part, dude. But, but she in did this fucking right here, great. And actually, he is the actual like it's based on a true story uh-huh. i don't know if you knew that i did not it is very it is very much so true okay. and if i'm not mistaking the man that played reindeer that was the actual victim huh that was the actual victim who lived through that scenario if i'm not mistaken okay. i did hear it i never fact checked it but it was yeah definitely crazy it was definitely a crazy mm-hmm. story i barely mm-hmm. remember but i remember it being really wild yeah yeah, and it definitely uh, shapes who you are, right? Yeah. But you, you, get, you can't let it control you. I feel like no, you know, just like all. addiction or anything else you've been through, jails, yeah. addictions, whatever you watch this channel for, that's kind of what it's about is getting past all that, putting yeah. it in the rear view mirror, moving on with life. Yeah, definitely. There's I did bigger wanna... and better things than... There really is. Man, life yeah, is beautiful. Yeah, talk about the Texas chick too, man. I feel like yeah, that chick that me... hit you from Texas was... I know, right? That was fucking crazy. So, guys, a lot of people, um, after we did this podcast, a lot of people were just reaching out for me from, like, everywhere. Like, I had, I had, uh, one day, I was serving and bartending, and I was busy, and these two ladies sat in my section, and it was a black lady and a white lady, and the black lady, she was like, took you long enough, and you know how I am. I'd be mm-hmm. like, okay, do you want service or not? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we just immediately clicked. Like, we just joking around with each other, but being smart as fuck. So she's like, mm, you, you taking too long. Like, shit like that. Whole time, I went to high school. Well, I didn't go to high school with them, but I was around I was around her, her, her kids. So at the end of the conversation, the girl that she was with, she came in just to sit in my section off the podcast she heard. And she was like, you're Jackie. I watch your podcast. Like, Mm -hmm. I just want you to know, like, I thought I I thought I was crazy for how I felt. And when you explained all of that, like, I've never felt like like, thank you. Mm -hmm. Like, I never felt like I could ever explain how I felt. And like, you know, we cried like I hugged them like I made friends from them. You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like Mm -hmm. got got the one girl's phone number. She was like, I want you to talk to my my niece or whatever. Like she needs help. Like, I really feel like you would inspire her. But the one girl. Yeah, she was like, you you really did that for me. Like I cried the whole time I watched your podcast. I'm trying to find this girl's message from Texas real quick. And that's what it's about, too, man, is like uh, letting people know that, you know, we've all been through something. Man. And there's somebody out there that can probably, you know, walk the line with you pretty close on a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And she was uh, she was just relating so mm-hmm. fucking heavy to mm-hmm. me and and everything I said, everything I said, she was just like, yo, I I, I thought I was like talking about myself. Mm-hmm. Like she thought I was talking about her mm-hmm. life because it's it's taboo to talk about and people get uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. But it's therapy like we said people need it people need it so i got this message for, on instagram actually i got this uh follow request because my instagram's private sorry y'all if you want to follow me though check me out um hey i watched your interview on spanking monkeys and i really appreciate you sharing your story i'm really having a hard time right now and your story really gave me a different perspective i just want to say thank you so much so I said, hi, my inbox is always open and I know life is hard for a lot of people, but I'm always here to help vent, talk to or listen, even if you don't really know me, but I could be a, sp- a safe space just for a little while. I don't know what you're going through, but if you're relating to things that I spoke of, then I'm sure it's a lot on your mind. If you ever need anything, please feel free to reach out to me. All love. Keep your head up and you're so beautiful. She said, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're so beautiful too. I'm only 19 right now, about to turn 20. And I'm really contemplating ending my life. I do have a psychologist that I see every week, and I'm very honest with her about how I feel. So I'm really trying hard to be happy. Your story really gave me a new perspective, and I hope that even if I'm not happy now, that maybe one day I will be, and I'll be able to look back with a new perspective, and it means more to me than you know to have watched that. Mm -hmm. That was heavy. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Just like I remember, I remember when you said that. Yeah, the to me. nineteen. Mm-hmm. Nineteen. I remember being nineteen. It's not easy. It's not easy, but we uh we responded a little bit. She said I live in I, I sent her a, a a loving text. Uh she said I live in Texas, which I think is far from you. But it helps a lot to hear that at the end of this road, there is hope. So I so appreciate your kind words. They do mean a lot to me. And I'm hoping as I can grow, as I grow, I can see more clearly the opportunities that are going to await for me. I definitely will remember to keep it simple and keep trying. Keep it simple is something my mom always said to me my whole life. Mm. So for her to say that back to me was just like, oh. mm. she said, thank you for being in my corner, even though you don't know me. And I was like, I'm coming to Houston. If you want to meet up, I'll meet up with you. I gave her my phone number. We could FaceTime. She said, thank you so much. Um, I never met up with her, though. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to meet up with her. Um, Actually, after I'm done with the podcast, I'm going to reach out to her just to check on her, make sure her mental's okay, make sure she's good. But that was that was beautiful to me, like to reach a young girl that. Uh, like and I don't even know you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. like I don't even know what she's going through she didn't even get into any of it away. yeah you're yeah yeah that was deep that was deep yeah that's what this is all about right yeah you can really sit down is. and talk to one person and maybe you know help them out but if you can sit down and talk to one person and everybody can watch it and get something from it too like make sure you cut that out I was just slurping that strawberry like that. oh no I'm leaving all that I right bet there, you will man. too yeah, I'm leaving that in I'll leave out that one part about the person's name and all that right there <laughs> just fucking buzzing it all slurp uh, that fucking strawberry like that hell yeah man well good luck with moving forward dude hell yeah like I feel like Colorado's a long way that kind of sucks but one well, day I'm going to visit. take this camper that way well, and catch some stories. And maybe yeah. I'll be like, Jax, I need a place to crash. Yo, you can crash all day long. Yeah, I mean, let it's me, all good. I mean, let me plug in. Yeah. Let me plug and in. And you can. And you definitely can. Come to the Rocky Mountains. Yeah, yeah. That'd be Rocky dope. Mountain High. I had to get another truck before I go that far. I'm not pulling this with my truck that far. It's mm. too far. 20, might be all right, but. What is it? 20, 22? 2200 miles? <laughs> But well, the last trip we did was 1,800. That's a lot. Yeah, well, not That's the last not... one, but the one before that, up around New York and all that. It was 1,800 miles. Is it, it might be 1,700. I don't know, That's a lot. but it's a lot of hundreds. It's a lot. We'll just fly. It's a lot. Yeah, well, you better bring your setup. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you better. We'll put, we'll put this camera on a plane. <laughs> Who cares? <Let's laughs> I just bring some it. microphones. Just the whole time. Right, the so what time. else you want to say, man? You want to drop anything else? You want to tell somebody where you be at to reach out to you? Oh, um, yeah. Obviously, my Instagram's open, at Queen to a Princess underscore. My Facebook, Jax Long. You can message me. I really don't be checking my messages on there, but I will. And that's Jax, J-A-X-X. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shout out to you. Shout out to everybody in Winchester. I'm going to miss everybody. For real. It's bittersweet. Everybody. I got uh, my last day of work's the 27th, and everybody's like, Jax, like, what are we going to do without you? What's this place going to do without you? I'm like, I'll be replaced quick. It'll be okay. You guys will be perfectly fine. It'll be all good. They're not going to be able to bring the sass back, though. Oh no! The sass is gonna go with you. Nobody's gonna take that spot. I don't know, but that's because no, there ain't nobody like you. Yeah, but that's the stuff you want to work with, though, man. I like working with people that are fun. I'm that guy too. I'm the one that's gonna laugh and make fun all day. And if not, people are looking at me going, "What's wrong with you, bro?" Yeah, I walk in with a face sometimes, and Ronnie's like, "What's wrong with you? What's Mm -hmm. wrong with you? What's wrong with you?" I'm like, "Nothing." Facts, facts. (laughs) And it could just be you just woke up or something. Yeah, it's not even. Yeah, as soon as I have a resting bitch face on, it's like Jackie. What's wrong with Jackie? Mm -hmm. I'm like, nothing's wrong. Because I'm the life of the party. I'm I'm a comedian, really, right. in real life. Class clown. Yeah, actually, um, I should get paid to do it. I know, right? That's Me how too. funny I fucking am. Me too. Like, I'm hilarious. I make people laugh all the time, and I tell them. I said, somebody was bitching at me the other day. I said, it's okay. Y'all gonna miss me when I'm gone. It's okay. And and don't call me neither. I'm right. <laughs> don't don't right. call me saying you missed me neither. Oh, shit. You gonna answer. <laughs> you know you gonna answer. Facts. But, yeah. All right, so yeah, man, we're gonna roll out with that one. Yeah, you know, that's drop true. a comment. You know what I mean? Ask some questions. Whatever y'all want to do there. Yeah, just a little recap. You know what I mean? Just yeah. a little recap. We know you was leaving for a while now. We've been meaning to do this, so yeah, I still need to get tatted though. Okay. Need a couple. Kind of. I need a need a little cover up right here. Mm. I need. I really want to start my leg sleeve. You're going to Colorado, bro. So. Are you going to fly back every time you get a tattoo? Why not? Okay. I, 
Yeah, I'll take flights, baby. <laughs> Big ones. <laughs> right? All right, man. So, till the next time. All right, guys. Don't sweat the petty things. Pet yeah. the sweaty things. Yeah, well, don't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>